Today we're going to be breaking down one of my favorite fights, one of the fights I'm most proud of. And I know everybody on the channel likes these fight breakdowns, likes me going through, showing you footage, explaining exactly what happened. So we are going to watch my second fight that I ever had in glory kickboxing together. So today we are traveling back to October 2013, about six months away from a decade ago when I was just getting started in glory. This was my second fight. Now, one of the things that happens very often in fights is people do not realize the behind the scenes stories, the extra stress or pressure that might be put on fighters that just creates such an interesting storyline that the fans are not aware of. So what I wanna tell you about this fight before we get to it is I signed a two fight contract with Glory. I had my first fight or my first number of fights in one night in Japan in that eight man tournament. And then I had one fight left. The fight we're looking at today was that fight. And it means so much because if you want to re-sign with these big promotions, you don't wanna finish on a loss. You wanna finish on a win so that you know you're gonna get re-signed. And they actually told me that. Glory Management said, win this fight and we will look at re-signing you. Imagine the pressure I felt going into this fight knowing that if I lost everything I'd worked for, getting into K1, losing out on it because the promotion folded, and then getting signed with Glory, getting a couple fights, and not winning enough of them and having it all slip away, how hard that would be. So that was the tremendous pressure I felt going into this fight. Then I had an opponent, Shane Oblansky, who actually ended up fighting a year later or after this, but he ended up pulling out about a month or three weeks before. And then the guy that I fought that you will see today, Jose Palacios, I believe, he was a replacement, again, three or four weeks notice. I don't know how much of a training camp he had, but I know it was frustrating for me because I went, oh, I was training for this dude, and now I'm fighting this other guy who's smaller, who fights out of Southpaw, who you know is just a different fighter altogether. And very often people hear, oh, okay, you're fighting somebody who doesn't have as much of a fight camp than you. That's advantageous, but it's very frustrating for the person who's been training for somebody else and has to make that last minute switch. So bearing all that in mind, let's jump into this fight and let's watch it together. And I will give you my analysis slash breakdown as we go through. So first off, let's look at the tail of the tape. I am 28 years old. Jose is 30, he's 5'9". It says I'm 5'10", I'm actually 5'11". We both weighed in around the same weight and we both have pretty close to the same reach. I have a little bit more than him. Next up, we are looking at fight records. Palacios having a record of 44, 12, and 0 with 10 KOs. So not a massive amount of KOs overall, but that's an impressive fight record. Very impressive when you look at the win-loss ratio and for somebody within North America to get that many fights, that means this dude has been very, very active throughout his career. Lots of fights every year. Just fantastic to see somebody get that kind of opportunity. Myself, I have at this point a 22 and two record. One loss was garbage decision. Even my opponent came up to me after and said, I didn't win that fight. And the second one was in the glory tournament where I won my first fight and then I fought Yura Kubo who was the two time K1 champion. And just in my head, I wasn't really prepared to defeat somebody at the highest level. I had to wrap my head around that in the future. So I lost that fight. So overall, I was feeling very confident, very good about all my past kickboxing fights. And we we're in Chicago for this bout. My brother in the corner there giving me some last minute instructions, just rubbing the neck, keeping me loose. You can see Crew Ellen, who has been in my corner many times, and we are getting underway. So here we go, coming up for the glove touch, Palacios out of that southpaw stance. And early on, nice job catching the low kick. I just wanna take a pause and just say, I am so frustrated with the new kickboxing rules, especially in 1FC, not allowing catching of the kicks. To me, it just seems ridiculous. Uh, I could go into a whole spiel, a whole rant on this, but we'll continue uh, on this fight and keep the focus there. So right now we're both trying to take advantage of the other person's opposite stance, trying to catch those angles. Palacios, he's doing a good job early on, staying active, not letting me 
get the pace that I want to get and just making sure that he's throwing as much as me. This in my mind, unless you're a super technical fighter, is somewhere where a lot of people go wrong. They come out, they feel out, they touch, they give the person that ability to maybe throw 30 shots when they've only thrown 10. And a lot of times that dictates the pace of the fight going forward. Try not to let that happen. You don't need to come out and try to knock somebody out or put yourself at risk of being knocked out. But coming forward and showing somebody that you're in the fight and that you're not gonna get overwhelmed with the other person throwing way more techniques is very, very good strategy. Well done by Palacios because I have a little trouble getting my rhythm down early on. He's there, he's in the fight, he's throwing at me. Nice inside low there and then I evade, nicely done. Palacios feeling me out. Again, inside low with the miss. Nice exchange back from him there. That was a great back and forward in terms of he throws, I throw, he throws, I throw. You want to get very good in fights at not being somebody who takes a shot and stops. And like I already said, Palacios is showing me he's here to fight. He's not letting me finish all the exchanges, which is very important as well. If you're the person who every time you, know, you block, you block, you finish, or you throw, you block, you finish, it's very hard for the person who's always on the end of that last shot. So trying to make sure that doesn't happen is very important. And Palacios is doing a good job being competitive in this area. Nice high round kick right there. And then the evasion again. That was a slick little offensive move from Palacios there. He comes forward, he blasts off a bunch of punches and then he gets out before I can counter with the low kick. Very, very nice. Again, like I said, he's bringing some pressure. And something that I really like that both of us are doing is hollowing out our hips to create space for low kicks to pass by. I was just doing a seminar yesterday, actually, and I was trying to teach people this technique. And many people, when they see a low kick come, they jump with both feet. But remember, moving two feet takes a lot of time and it puts you out of distance of any potential counters. So being able to just hollow your hips out and then you're right within punching distance with a little step or within low kick distance for the counter, it's very important to do and it's nice to see that both of us are executing that technique so well. Nice little spinning back fist there. You can tell that Palacios has a high level because I throw a big low kick. He checks it. I go to throw another low kick, hoping that what he'll do is go for a check and drop his hands because I come into the spinning back fist. That's a really good way to set up techniques. You throw something, you fake something, and then you come around with an attack at a different level. But Palacios getting that check or that hollow out off and making sure his hands do not shift. It's not like that. It's just leg up hands stay high. Ooh, nice lead body shot into the cross. Nothing landing super flush, but still a nice technique to be able to utilize. Ooh, I got countered right there. Just good back and forward right now. Nice distance between each of us. Ooh, spinning hook kick just missed. That gave him almost a haircut there. And here we go into some really nice boxing. Again, I throw the good strong punches, but Palacios comes right back. He's there to fight. He's not gonna let me overtake him. Respect to him for that. He's in this fight, especially in, well, at least in this first round. Good job there with the front kick, pushing him back, keeping him at distance. I worked a lot of head knees for this fight. I haven't really got to execute many yet because that's something that has to be done in tighter. And so far this fight has been more at a distance, but now you can see I'm starting to close the range, starting to pressure a little bit further forward. Here we come down to the last 10 seconds of the round. Nice little fade back there on that spinning hook kick. Pressuring forward, body shot, slip, body shot down to the ground. I'll throw this up in slow motion replay. And this is a technique I'm not 100% sure if it legitimately was a knockdown because a lot of times when you slip and you bang somebody to the body, they crumple and he kind of fell backwards, but he fell in such an odd way. And I have heard people talk about like your leg shutting down when you get hit and you kind of stumble. It's very hard to tell if I stepped on his foot, which I don't remember doing uh, in that moment, especially I remember going, what made him fall? Was it my feet on his feet? No, it wasn't that. So. He didn't crumple, but he kind of fell back 
don't know if it was a knockdown or not, but either way, I really like it because I come body shot and then I see the head punch coming as a counter and then I roll and give him another body shot. I just really like the fact that I was able to get a roll off and come with the body shot that hard. And now here we move into round number two, little glove touch. Usually for me, the first round is feel them out. If I feel them out and I'm like, you know what, I got this. Now I start to pick the pace up. You can tell the first 10 seconds here is pretty ferocious, back and forward. I don't wanna give this guy any ability to run forward. And plus I know with that 10-8 first round that I am far up on the scorecards, but I'm not gonna hang back. I'm gonna go for a big win so I can show glory that I deserve to be re-signed. Gotta give him a show, a performance. Really like that one there. Clean blocks at head level, catch the low kick, dump him over. I take a warning for it, but whatever. You still look good, and in the judges' minds, you probably get a little extra, little extra score. Working those hands nice and crisp. Fast combos, maintaining my distance now, throwing, stepping out. Very important thing to do if somebody's still a risk with their counters. And I love the rhythm of this combo, cross hook, Little pause, uppercut jab. Just a little off beat, throws him off enough to get, not get the counters going, but just looks so crisp, so clean. Starting to get him into the corner now. This is sort of my signature pressure that I like to bring. His back's to the ring ropes. I'm throwing, he has nowhere to go. Head knee, which we worked on. Big punches coming up to the head. Firing away, firing away. You guys know this about me. You know I like the pressure. Many of you love that about my style. I love being in that zone where I'm right here, they cannot back up. If they wanna go anywhere, they've gotta move sideways and I can very simply track them. Much easier to track somebody sideways, strictly sideways, than potentially backwards and sideways when you have to start chasing them on angles. So I've still got him up to the ring ropes, banging away. He's a hard dude to finish, I will give him that. Lots and lots of pressure, does a good job just wrapping me up there. But it's good sometimes for me to recognize that I'm putting in a lot of effort and I'm not getting a lot out of it right now. So let's just tone it down and reset. And Palacios is back up against the ring ropes, lighting him up with a couple punches. Take an angle to get his back flat. Big uppercut, big hook, head knee. Go for another head knee, walking him into the corner. Again, he manages to wrap me up. But in terms of round number two right now, I'm looking good. Palacios is smiling at me, but when somebody smiles, usually they know they're losing the fight and it doesn't really concern me. Nice spinning sidekick into spinning back fist there. This is one of those moments where you see really high level stuff come out of me. Why is this so high level? Well, if you come with a spinning sidekick and immediately you reset and you start to go again, most likely the person's thinking exact same technique. But if you come up there after you just went down low, provided the person's not high level, which Palacios is, they will compromise their head and you can get that shot in very clean just for throwing a fake in the previous technique. Down to the end of the round, Palacios throws a spinning hook kick. I don't really see it, but my hands are up and I just take it off the glove. This is one of the reasons why I like to preach hands up, hands up, hands up. Sometimes you miss things. Sometimes for a moment you phase out or you just don't see it. You blink and then it's there. Having my hands high has saved me probably more fingers than I have, than I can count, where I just had my hand up, I felt the, 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 the kick hit my glove, I'm like, whoa, glad my hands were up. So solid round number two out of me. First one, 10-8, because I got that questionable knockdown. That one was a 10-9, now we move into round number three. Palacios has to come out hard, because he knows he's far behind on the scorecards. He's banging in big punches. I'm just keeping a tight guard, staying safe, letting him sort of slow himself out, burn himself out, little step back. He threw a lot of punches there, but nothing landed. That's a good feeling to have when somebody unloads and you're like, eh, no big deal, I'm fine. Ooh, right there I saw a head kick off the lead leg that just went over. He, ha he just happened to slip his head forward, which saved him. But I actually did a tutorial the other day on that head kick and what you need to do to get more power. Check that out. Nice little angle there to get away from the southpaw, get him back his get his back to the ring ropes again, and then right back to that pressure, that smart footwork and smart tactics. And Palacios unloading some hands, jab to the body hook, double jab, spinning back fist, his hands are up again, but sweet, sweet combo. Triple jab into a big head knee and nice front kick. What I love there was the variety of technique. When you can be unpredictable, you are so much harder to figure out. 
throw the jab down to the body hook, double jab up to the spinning back fist. The person's like, okay, he's coming with all these fancy hands. I'm gonna attack him, jam him up. And then I just use that Muay Thai teep to stop him in place. What a variety, what a display of all sorts of techniques in like a five, six second period. That's why this is one of my favorite fights that I've had. Maybe Palacios was not a champion, you know, for Glory or K1 or something, the way that, you know, Mosab or Lerdzilla or Kevin Ross, these bigger names that I fought were. But overall, I really like the variety of technique I was able to demonstrate. Coming down to the last minute and a half of the final round, Palacios is gonna have to do something big to get this fight. Nice spinning kick again out of him, but my hands are up. Again, crowding him back to the ring ropes, bringing a lot of pressure, keeping him stuffed so he has nowhere to go. He tries to angle off. I'm right there with him, throwing those punches, giving him no space to breathe. He's launching big shots. I'm throwing back at him. Again, this is something that I absolutely loved about this fight is when you have somebody cornered and they have to work the angle, but they have to keep their back to the ring ropes, it's so easy for me to track them. They have this big movement to do and all I have to do is like step and they're still right there. This is that ability to control the ring. That's what they mean by ring generalship. When you can get this person where you want them and exploit them for it, it is fantastic. And now he's up to the ring ropes. He has nowhere to go. I'm unleashing some fast hands there. He's doing a good job countering though. Good catch there into a spinning back fist. That is unique. And then evade the spinning back fist. It's fun to be creative with different ways to respond off catches. Now, most people when they catch a front kick, they're gonna go for a sweep. But that's kind of frowned upon in glory even back then. And I probably would have been warned a couple times. Otherwise, that's probably what I would have done. Very often you catch. You pull the leg and you come into a hook. On that one I caught and then I just rotated into the spinning back fist. Again, he does a good job keeping his hands up. If it was somebody who was not as good as, that, as him at that, it could have been a very nice knockdown. So what do you do when there's 30 seconds left in the fight and you know you've clearly dominated? Do you sit back, do you cruise, or do you throw spinning techniques like that? A spinning sidekick, why not? Keeping the pressure on, pushing forward, mixing in some fast hands, obviously not putting myself in jeopardy, but still having fun and still putting on a good show. Front kick to the spinning back fist, with, which is misses, but still looks good. Nice round kick off the lead leg there. Switch to a southpaw stance. I don't know why I did that, probably just for fun, because the fight's pretty much over. Superman into a big knee. He throws a spinning hook kick at the end, and I actually didn't get my hand up on that one, but you can see that even when a spinning hook kick lands on you, if you can get a little movement, even a spinning hook kick doesn't really hurt you or knock you down. I talked in one of my videos recently about taking a shot and moving with it and how somebody like Rod Tang, I actually think I have that video, I'll post it up here, how Rod Tang looks like he has such a good chin, but really it's number one because he moves with the shots instead of just standing there and taking them. So a spinning hook, it comes at my head. And instead of standing and going, I'm gonna fight through it, you just do a little drop, a little roll with it. And then when it hits, the impact is so much less. So that there was a breakdown of my fight with Jose Palacios. All the pressure that I felt having to win so I could re-sign with glory and hopefully get to the point where I got to fight for one of these belts. It happened because that fight was a win. Without that, who knows what would have happened in my career. This is the type of pressure that fighters face all the time that the average fan is not aware of. They might go, oh, look at he's having his third fight in UFC, oh, whatever. And you don't even know that this is the last fight on his first contract. He needs a win, otherwise he's gonna get booted out. It's very interesting when you start finding out all these little details. So overall, I was very happy with that fight. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Hope you enjoyed the breakdown. Remember, I have many more breakdowns on this channel and you can check out one of them up there. I'll just link it up. There'll probably be links to the other fights within that one as well. Just, you can end up going down that rabbit hole, watching all my fights and looking at all the breakdowns. If you enjoyed the episode, please give it a like. If you have not already, Join the channel, get subscribed for lots of content, not just fight breakdowns, but training tutorials, workouts, watching other fights and commentating them. There's so much variety here. As always guys, train hard. I will see you back here soon for another video.